Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to pay your rent selling only handheld video games like these. So if you've been following me for a while, you know I love to sell obsolete electronics on Amazon, used ones using Amazon FBA. And this video is no exception. I'm going to show you what I look for, how I prepare them, and how much money you can expect to make selling only old handheld games. Here is my haul from today. I picked these up this morning. I did not pay more than $2 for any of these. 50 cents, 50 cents, 50 cents, $2, $2, $1, $1, and then, did I say that already? Well, whatever it was, I spent hardly any money on these. And now we're going to go through the steps you have to have to, uh, well, make them sellable. Because look at this. Look at this schmutz on here. Who wants to buy that? Look at this. Who wants to buy a nasty game like that? I don't know. We're going to fix them, though, so no one has to. At this point in the video, I want to answer a few commonly asked questions. One, what about shipping? I'm using Amazon FBA. Shipping is taken into account. What about storage? Amazon stores these items. They do all the storage, the picking, the packing. Why is your warehouse so messy? Well, I'm a messy guy. Who cares? That's why I use Amazon FBA, because I can be a sloven pig. Sloven pig? <laughs> <laughs> and they have, you know, it doesn't affect my business at all. I can be a cluttered mess right here. I mean, it's going to be, it should be cleared out in a few weeks, but for now, it's not too good. And that doesn't affect my Amazon FBA business. It just, they're two separate entities. And then there are the people who will say, I am lying. Well, I'm not lying. You can look at my other videos. I've done this for years. Uh, it's either a very committed lie or... <sighs> It's possible, and you could be the one making an extra two grand a month selling <laughs> handheld games. I'll let you decide. Okay, so now we have our games. What do you? What did I look for? Now, obviously, there are some games that sell for nothing at all. Some of these handheld games, uh, not these in particular, but some other ones are worthless, right? So how do you know? My rule of thumb, I have two, well, three rules of thumb. And that's, I go for Radica games because Radica games... That's like a well-known brand, uh, and those are always gonna be worth at least like 10 bucks. I go for old TV shows or old video games, anything that already has branding attached to it, or I go for Sudoku uh, or you know whatever those other games are, Scrabble, Sudoku, Crosswords, that kind of stuff. Things that people already like. In addition to those three rules, oh man, I can't do fingers right. In addition to those three rules, Anything new in box, I will buy for under a few bucks. And if it's even up to like 15 bucks, I'm still gonna scan the back barcode because some of these new in box games sell for a hefty profit. When we're actually out looking for these games in thrift stores or garage sales or wherever you are, what I do is I check the back battery panel. This one, I already took it off right there. It has a screw, so I didn't wanna waste my time fumbling with it. Look here, look for corrosion on the contact points. This doesn't have any. Uh, but sometimes if they're old or if they're very, very uh, poorly handled or not taken care of, corrosion is going to build up there and it's not going to play. Now, you can remove corrosion. I just use a uh, Goo Gone and a toothbrush to remove it if I have it. And that makes it work. You kind of got to scratch at it and pick at it. It's gross, but uh, that's how you fix, I suppose, or repair these corroded contact points. Not all games are going to have those. This is just a, a, a watch battery in there. I guess that is a AAA battery. But uh, some other ones, like this, for example, I think uses a watch battery. Uh, that's a lot trickier to test. And um, for those, I just say, okay, either it works or it doesn't work. When you flip it over, you're going to find some some mess on these. Uh, this probably isn't the best example. But that one, like, it's got some mud maybe on it. This one is covered in, like, gross, greasy fingerprints. What I do is I just, I use my table as, like, a pallet, basically. Let's get crazy. And I spray a little bit of Goo Gone on there, and I, uh, I just get a toothbrush, an old, disgusting toothbrush, rub it around, and uh, I just, I, I wash it down like this. And you're going to say, well, doesn't liquid stuff ruin electronics? And I have cleaned, in my life, probably 10,000 electronic items. I bet more. I mean, honestly, more. And I've never, ever, ever had this toothbrush, that process, ruin an electronic. Uh, I'm not, like, washing a live wire or something. There's plastic in here. It's, it's, you know, it's not made to just ruin if any moisture touches it. It'll, uh, it'll be fine as long as you're not being an idiot and, like, pouring 
goo gone into those little holes. What I do is I wash it down uh, and then I use this, just Lysol afterwards. And I do the same thing, wash it down, and then I use a, a paper towel or a washcloth to clean it off and it's gonna be good as new. I'll, I'll show you the before and after. We'll, we'll show you the before and after on this one because this one's way, way nastier. So this is how it looks before. And here's how it looks after the Lysol. I don't know why that combination of Goo Gone and Lysol uh, seems to remove most everything, but it does. There's no grease on it. The corners, there's a little bit, I guess. But, I mean, enough where no one's really going to notice. The plastic stickers haven't been really warped or anything. Uh, the machine still turns on fine and plays. It's, uh, it's clean now. It's ready to be listed. When I want to see how much an item sells for on Amazon, I use an app called Profit Bandit. It's like eight bucks a month. You can also use the Amazon seller app for free. Why do I pay more? Because I like the way it looks. It's purely a personal decision. Let's get started though. And again, the app is Profit Bandit. Okay, so in order for me to make sense, I have to explain a few things very quickly. The profit numbers I'm showing you, they are after the cost of shipping it to Amazon, after the cost of them mailing it to customers, after the cost of them storing it, after the cost of all the packaging supplies, but not after the buy cost. Everyone buys things for differently, so I'm just saying what they're worth after all of the fees and service fees and expenses are taken into account. So it's not a gross profit, it isn't a net profit, it's how much money they're worth. Uh, how much money do you have to play with if you're out buying these? That's the way I look at it. All right, guys, let us uh, do this. We're going to see how much they're worth, again, using the app Profit Bandit. And this is not with the buy cost, just everything else. So if you can buy it for a dollar, minus a dollar off of the profit number. If you can buy it for $10, minus $10 off of the profit number. That might be a negative number. That's why I'm saying it's the money you have to play with. Blackjack, 21, Radica, big screen. I would have guessed it was worth a lot of money because of the big screen. It's not. It's worth $9.95 to consumers. And out of that, we get $5.26. And I paid what, a buck for this, so I'm making $4.26. That is not a lot of money. But if you do that a thousand times, it adds up. Radica Checkers. This sells for $39.95 used. You have it new, probably about 60 bucks. Uh, out of that $39.95, we get to keep $30.73. So whatever your buy cost is, minus that from $30.73. And that's your uh, net profit. Hangman. I know all of you have seen this game. Uh, sometimes it has like a Western sticker down here. This one has a plastic design. You can sell them both on the same ASIN. It sells for $29.99. And out of that, we get to keep $22.99. Hey, guess what? I made a mistake. The Hangman game is not worth 22 bucks. It's worth like six bucks. So take $16 off the total. Why are fees so high? It's so much higher than eBay because eBay does not store and ship your items. And if you're messy like me, you're going to lose a lot of eBay sales because, well, you're messy. But on Amazon, they handle it all. They do the nitty gritty detail work. Family Feud, the disgusting one that I cleaned up, sells for $24.95. It took me about two minutes to clean this thing up. So uh, 17 bucks out of that $24.95 times 30, that is $510 an hour. That's how much you would make if you just cleaned and listed these all day every day. You're not going to do that, but it's a fun little number to throw around. Flip Top Tetris. This game is so cool. I thought it was worth way more. It has the flip top so you can, you know, make sure that no one throws a dagger at your game when you're not looking and ruin the LCD screen. It also has a backlit uh, button right there, which is also, I'm sure, you know, I try to think of the instances where someone's buying these games and it must be where you can't have a cell phone uh, and, and not having a cell phone means probably you're a bit isolated. And so having the ability to have a backlit screen, I thought was useful. It's only worth $17.99. Out of that $17.99, you get to keep $11.94. So I bought this for two bucks because I thought it'd be cool. I'm still only making like $10, which is not a lot of money, but for so little work, uh, I think you see where it begins to make sense.
People love Wheel of Fortune games. They really, really do. Wheel of Fortune Wii games sell good. Wheel of Fortune handheld games sell good. Wheel of Fortune TV games sell good. Like the jacks plug into your console. They all sell good. And these handheld devices are no exception. This sells for $37.78 used, probably closer to 70 bucks new. And out of that $37.78, I will make $27.32. 25 bucks for a tiny handheld game that I'm sure you see all the time at garage sales, your grandparents' house, thrift stores, wherever. Guess how much this one's worth. Just guess. I think it's going to surprise you. It's a little Radica poker. What makes it special is it has two modes. It's got draw poker and deuces wild, which means twos or can be anything. Uh, it goes for $39.95 in used condition. These all sell for cheap on eBay because eBay does not have the buying power that Amazon does. Things sell for a hell of a lot more on Amazon. They might sell slower in instances like this where it's a, a very niche, long tail product, but they're going to sell for so much more. $39.95 turns into $31.55 in our pocket if we sell it. You're going to be buying these for a dollar all day when you see them. But this isn't even the most valuable one. The most valuable one, and I saved it for last, is this one right here. Press your luck, handheld edition. The sales rank is 800,000, so it might take until November to sell, you know, right before Christmas. But even then, that's less than six months away, so I'm avoiding those costly long-term storage fees. There are no listings. I checked the price history, and I believe it'll sell for $69.95. If it was new in box, I'd sell it for probably 100 bucks even. Out of that $69.95, we get to keep $57.05. So if you paid $7 for this, could you imagine paying $7 for this at a thrift store? You're still making 50 bucks. It might take four or five months to get that, but if it's Amazon FBA and they do the handling and storing, you know, it seems like a pretty easy investment, at least from my perspective. But how do you actually uh, prepare these to be sent to Amazon? Well, it's really simple. This is a six by nine bubble mailer. You can buy them in a pack of a thousand for about a hundred bucks on eBay. I just take my little handheld thing, put it in there, put my FBA sticker on there. And if you want to learn how to print off those, I have other videos on them. Just check my channel and we, uh, we mail it off to Amazon. Generally, you're going to be paying about 25 cents a pound when you uh, ship these things to Amazon. They each weigh less than a pound for sure. So we're talking, you know, 10 cents shipping cost. But again, that was built into the, uh, the actual profit numbers I was telling you earlier. When it all shakes down, it's 198.19. I spent an hour total doing all this, making the video included. Very, very easy stuff to do. Uh, almost 200 bucks. That is not including the cost of goods because I don't know how much you can buy these for. I can't teach uh, how to get a good deal. You know, it's more just if it's available, jump on it. Or what's even smarter is don't just look out for these. Look out for those trends I mentioned earlier. Uh, are they products with existing consumer bases? So branded ones off of TV shows or video games. Are they things that someone's going to look for? If so, you can capitalize on that. You can add value by making them within their grasp using Amazon FBA. People use FBA because of the free one or two day shipping. Why not capitalize on that and make some more money? There it is, guys. Again, 198.19. About an hour's work. Don't do what I do. Do your own stuff. Make your own money. And uh, you're going to have a great life. All right, guys, that was the video. If you like weird ways to make money, you should subscribe to me because guess what? I make a lot of money in a lot of really, really weird ways. Join the Facebook group below. It's free for entrepreneurs. It gives lots of good tips. Join my Patreon. Pay me money for helping you and uh, share the video. You don't have to actually pay me. That was a joke. But I do want this to be viewed by as many people as possible. Okay, guys, see you later.